This is Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss, and I am again excited to be here again with one of an amazing entrepreneur who's going to share with us her story in entrepreneurship. We are here today with Carla Lester. She is wellness trainer. How are you doing, Carla? I'm great. That's it's awesome. That's great. So before we get started with Carla, what I wanted to do is just remind you all this week we are talking and have been talking to women of color as they share with us tips and recommendations for their own journey and how as we go through our journey, how we can do it better. So don't forget to like and share this video if you are enjoying what you are hearing. And with that, Carla, so excited to have you here today. So what I wanted to start with is what made you decide to become an entrepreneur? So becoming an entrepreneur was something that I had wanted to do for a long time before I actually took the plunge. Mm -hmm. And I will say that I lost my job a couple of times before I realized that I had to really take it seriously yeah. if I wanted to stop losing my job. Um, but I was laid off. Probably I was, The first time I was laid off, I was interested in starting my own business, but I didn't really know how. And then the second time, after the second time I, my position was consolidated, I finally got serious about yeah. finding whatever I could about like really trying to start a business. I knew that I had the skills because I had been teaching well, fitness classes for a long time, doing personal training, doing wellness coaching and teaching. And so I knew I had the skills to be independent but I just didn't really know where to start. And so shortly after I, my second position where I got laid off or my job was consolidated, I started really getting serious about it. And honestly, I, I did a whole bunch of jumping here, jumping there before I got settled in finally. I finally knew what course to take. Which way to go. And you know, it's interesting that you say that because I actually, that's sort of a little bit of our story too. We jumped into entrepreneurship because I got laid off. I was pregnant um, and got, a, I got severed <laughs> during, you know, my maternity leave. And my husband's like, we're taking that money and we're, we're opening a business. And I was like, but I want to, I want to pay the car off. He's like, no, we're opening a business. And that's how we jumped too. So what were some of the things that you struggle with when you first started? How long have you been it? Actually, let's talk about how long you've been an entrepreneur. Yeah, I started my business in 2013, mm -hmm. and um, and that was that was probably that was kind of rocky at first. And I shouldn't. I started really like getting into it, like selling some, you know, independent things, doing a lot of, I would say, like independent contractor type things. Yep. And that was and freelancing, and that was easier than I thought. That was easier than I thought. Um, but at the time I really struggled with feeling like I was getting burnt out doing the same mm -hmm. thing, you know, over and over again and wanting really to do more, but being afraid that, to do more, that not knowing what my options were to really like expand and do something bigger. And, um, it, it's all good though. Like all of that stuff, even feeling frazzled, burnt out, feeling lost and, <laughs> and yeah. then seeking help and all of that stuff was really good because it's just, um, it's really taken, when I, sometimes when I think about it, 2013 sounds like a long time ago, but it's, it's all been quite the process, quite the journey. So, you know, you say 2013 and it seems like 2013 was just yesterday, um, but that's six years ago, doesn't it? Like, um, yeah. So you've been on the journey for six years. So you, you talked about, you struggled with a couple of things. So what, what are some of the things that you think were the biggest lessons learned that you, you had to, you know, actually make yourself acknowledge, okay, this is something that I get now. And as an entrepreneur, I got it. Like I, this is the less one of my, one of my hardest lessons I had to learn. Mm. So what comes to mind right now is something that I'm really starting to get a grasp on and it did take me a long time. And I wish I could kind of really whisper this into my 2013 self ear. And that is, don't be careful. Stop walking on eggshells. Just uh, freaking sure. put it out there, whatever it is that you want to do. And, you know, what's that saying? You jump and then you, the parachute kind of forms underneath. You That's right. Have, <laughs> you almost have to do that a zillion times. I had to do that a zillion times. I know some people are lucky and maybe they didn't have to do, do it a zillion times, but you do that a zillion times. So the sooner you get started, the better. The sooner you get to jumping off and jumping off and jumping off and jumping off that cliff, 
the faster you'll get a parachute that is actually going to work up under you. And um, a great and analogy. So many different, yeah, there's so many different ways, you know, so many different ways to do it. But I think you almost have to do it, jump and jump and jump in order to find the way that is yours. I like the fact that you said that jump and jump and jump. So it's not just a one time jump. It really is a multiple jump um, process that you go through when you're an entrepreneur. Um, and that's so true. Like I totally get that. Like I'm actually going to write that down. Like it's not, it's not your one, you're not going to jump one time and you're like, Oh, that's it. I mean, I think there's some lucky people who, like you say, they jump and you know, that's it. But the reality is even those people will tell you that they jumped many times and probably jumped and fell on their butt <laughs> and had to get up and redo it again. So I love that. Um, that's a really good analogy as well. So, okay, I've got a community of newbie people, seasoned people, but let's just assume you're talking to the new person who's on the fence of jumping. What would you, besides just actually doing it, what would be a couple of recommendations that you would give the newbie entrepreneur in terms of, you know, making that leap of faith that they have to, that you ultimately are doing when you jump? What, what are some recommendations do you have? Yeah, if I could tell the newbie entrepreneur anything, I would tell them that you don't, it might feel like you, you know, have, forever to figure it out. I think a lot of times I delayed things, I put things off, I tried to be really careful with things. Um, but really now is, so taking, doing something now is literally imperative. Like um, every single day you can be doing something like, so figure it out, whatever it is that you want to be doing every single day and, and turn that into you know, your guide, because it really is this thing where if you pick something that you hate, you know, if you try to do something that you hate, um, it's going to suck pretty much every day. It can't be, it can't be the something that the end result is good, but all of the other stuff leading up to it sucks. It can't be that. Yeah. It has to be this thing that you actually are interested in doing on the daily basis. Um, yes. or you are willing to, you know, do it every day, even though it might not work right away. You're willing to do it even though um, everyone may laugh at you <laughs> or, you know, or you may not support have you time selling it right away. Yeah. Or um, you might feel like some days like this sucks, but at least you were doing something that you didn't feel like was yeah. you know, the same as your job, you know, um, or something at least good enough that you might have to do some things that kind of suck every now and then, or maybe like once or twice a week until you can kind of get someone to take it over. But something that you actually want to do every day I feel like it's it's really easy to to kind of get boxed in and do something that sucks yeah um, but then not only are you going to procrastinate but it's also just going to be 10 times harder when it doesn't work out there's a really good <laughs> there's a really good Jim Carrey quote and um and I'm going to paraphrase because I can't think of exactly what it is but you can fail at what you don't want so you might as well just start failing at what you really do want that's a great, that's a great, you know, Jim Carrey's actually a very deep guy. Like you, like I read some of his story and he is like, I mean, he believes in manifestation. I, did you ever hear that he carried like a $10 million um, check? Like he knew that he was going to make $10 million on a movie. So he wrote down $10 million and carried it in his wallet for years until like I think it was in Living Color and then whatever movie he did right after that he got that 10 million check and he pulled it out and that was his thing like he totally believes in manifestation that guy's like that guy's like the fact that you quoted him he's like amazing yeah I love Jim Carrey I feel like he definitely has some cool he has tons of little stories like the one that you just mentioned yeah that make him a really interesting guy he's not just a comedian he's definitely like he goes layers and layers deep on some really interesting topics. So check him out for sure. If you're entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. You're He's definitely and deeper all than his, uh, his roles on, on, on movies. He's much deeper than that. Um, he's actually, yeah. like you said, he is a very interesting character to follow. Um, so I love that, you know, taking action every single day. And I do love that quote that, 
you know, if you're going to <laughs> fail at something that you don't like doing, then you might as well be doing, you know, failing at what it is that you want to get done. And I love that because it's so true. Um, so talk to me about wellness. Like, how did you get into wellness? And um, tell me about what you do and what we can expect from Carla Lester, wellness trait teacher. I got into wellness because like a lot of people, I was actually at some point trying to lose weight, but I didn't really take it seriously. I have an identical twin sister who, it, who was always, I was always compared to, she was always the thinner twin. And so I kind of was always very weight conscious, even when I didn't have to be. And so um, I grew up always just trying different workouts, trying different diets, trying different ways to, you know, be slimmer. That was kind of a really big focus. And, um, and even though it wasn't always a healthy uh, focus, <laughs> I did find something that was pretty healthy and that's exercise. And I fell in love with fun exercise. And so that's really a lot of what I, or how I got into wellness. And mm -hmm. that's a lot too, what would I advocate all the time? Because even though exercise, yes, can help you to lose weight and look better. There's so many benefits to exercise that literally that's just a tip of the iceberg, you know? So exercise is just great for your brain. It's great for, you know, your overall sense of well-being. It's excellent for energy performance. And so that's kind of my in into to wellness and realizing that exercise was literally one of the best habits that you could acquire on a daily basis. So uh, exercise and uh, one of my favorite writers also says reading. So that's funny. And I agree with that. Writing or sorry, reading and exercise are typically like those are one of two of the best habits you can do on a daily basis. And um, from there, it really kind of helped me to start learning more about the whole person wellness scene. Exercise is huge, not just for your physical, but also for mental and spiritual as well. But then there's other things too, like even eating healthy. So doing these holistic type activities that seem like they, you know, will definitely yield results with your weight they actually help you in so many different areas of your life that I started to really get interested in how multifaceted just take, making one decision can be in all areas, like even yeah. relationships and self-worth and finances. It all kind of like emanates from being able to make these decisions around your health and your physical well-being and physical, spiritual, mental well-being. But it can literally be one or two actions. I got really fascinated with that. And um, I love being able to talk about wellness, as you can probably tell, um, because it's so interconnected in our lives and, you know, how we feel about ourselves. And it kind of just grew from there. I started to realize that, you know, there's just so much there that you don't always hear about when you're, you know, a personal trainer or you're teaching classes. And so I just started getting deeper and deeper with it. Uh, which has been helpful too, because in my family, I have a lot, I see a lot of things that I kind of want to change for, you know, our health future. And I, I landed smack dab in the middle of it just by trying to, you know, take care of my own health. Needs yes. Um, a career. It's come kind of a great rewarding career as well. I um, love so that. My biggest piece is exercise. And so you can usually find me teaching classes, teaching people how to exercise and eat healthy and stay consistent and, you know, develop habits that allow them to feel good about themselves and have also like a higher health and wellness. Um, so that's kind of my end. Fit Outside the Box is the company that right now is kind of my baby. And, you know, I, you see it on YouTube, you'll see it on um, my Facebook, but it's full service classes, fitness wellness and well-being too so all of those things that's awesome so the links to fit outside of the box are um inside of this post so i am geographically um a challenge so i never know if it's up or right or left but just look for it and the link will be there um so that you can um, learn all about she's got an amazing youtube channel does some amazing classes um virtually that you can work out to as well and so Carla, what would you like to leave us with as um, we wrap up um, our conversation today? Yeah, so I, I just you know want to remind you that um, what's funny too with entrepreneurship is that you know all of the business decisions we make come from our energy, come from our ability to take care of ourselves first. Because if we don't take care of ourselves first, we don't have a business, right? You can't call in sick at your business. No. 
Uh, well, we can, but it's not going to be good for long. So it's really important, that piece. And um, I do offer one-on-one -on -one wellness consultations, and it's so important to take care of the whole person. And I think it's, it's just even more important when you realize your business is you. So your business is you. It's literally just as important as, you know, getting clients or, you know, earning money your business is taking care of your health and well-being. So I do offer one-on-one -on -one wellness consultations, and I love being able to work with people who know that, you know, it's bigger than just checking off boxes and doing like like a science project and a lot of times <laughs> yeah. entrepreneurs they definitely take they take a lot of risks but don't take the health risks you know if you want some guidance around wellness and health and just being able to have more energy vibrancy then hit me up and do a one-on-one -on -one wellness consultation with me we can get you situated exercise is going to be a huge one on the plate so if you've been struggling with exercise definitely hit me up if you've been struggling with getting the energy the motivation to actually live a healthier lifestyle we can make it so that it's a lot easier so definitely connect with me um, at one of these links here i will tell you too you can hop on my calendar which i'm going to give you that link it's www.calendly.com slash carla luster Perfect. We'll, we'll have that in the post as well. And so Carla, you know, I just want to piggyback on um, what you've just said about don't take that health risk. And I think so many people, um, celebrities, just people that I've been, you know, I see on Facebook who are just, you know, they're dying because of lack of health or, you know, having heart attacks at young ages. And I think when you are an entrepreneur, I think the very biggest tendency, particularly for people who are in the online entrepreneur space, is they work themselves. And I am guilty of this myself. I sit here at this desk. Most of you see the same surroundings when I go live. And this is what I do. And I sit here for hours upon hours upon hours. And I don't take care of myself the way that I need to. So having someone in your in, in my corner like you is critical. And being able to create that type of balance when you where you are equally focused on your health and your wellness um, is really where your success is going to lie. And so, because I've been reading all, you know, everything about what successful people do, and all of them have a component of health. Um, exercise and there is a wellness part to their routine daily um, and that's something that I, I've got to get better at myself so um, if you are struggling with it I absolutely encourage you to reach out to Carla because she is patient um, she is kind and she is amazing so um, she is a great advocate in your corner and she'll push you though too still <laughs> so wait a minute <laughs> she's not a pushover she certainly will push you but she is very kind and she's very understanding so i um, being able to put together that wellness plan and you don't want to wait until you're sick right um, that's too late you want to do it beforehand um, so I love it I'm just so glad that you were able to join us today Carla thank you so much yeah I'm happy to be here and uh, it's it's great what you're doing I love it and um, yeah, it's always good connecting with you Sunday, so you know that. <laughs> awesome. So um, all of her links are available inside of the post. And Carla, thank you again, and we will talk soon. All right, sounds good. Bye, everybody. Don't forget yeah. to check me out. That's right. <laughs>